This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. When I like watches, Mason. Yes. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> when you deign to like a watch, <laughs> yes, I'm listening. I, I am... Uh, my my heart goes towards MVMT. It's what I feel in my heart. Oh, yes. And my head backs it up and my wrist backs it up again. I've got two backups. Oh, that's good because <laughs> you can't trust your, which one did you say first, your heart? He- head or heart. You can't trust either of those, no. but you can trust your, your wrist. <laughs> Correct. Mm-hmm. Mason, uh, MVMT watches or movement watches as they're called. I thought it was MVMT. It's not. Look, I'm We had a-, a long debate for a long time about this. <laughs> we had to wait until they gave us the copy and it said pronounced movement. We're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We get it. We figure things out. Uh, so they make premium watches that start at just $95, where at a department store, a similar watch would be 400 to 500 bucks. And they, blander. And blander. These are minimalist, but they're nice. I'm wearing one right now. And when I say wearing one, I'm holding. I was going to say I'm, you're not wearing. Because I take I take it. my watch off before the podcast starts for some Why reason. Why do you do that? I don't know. I just want to be free to make big gestures. <laughs> sure. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to hit my my nice watch against this soft couch or this dog. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or this microphone. I know, right? So good. You can edit that out. <laughs> I won't. Okay. Uh, so basically, yeah, they cut out the middleman, uh, which means they cut out, cut out the markup. Because these are the, these are guys who, who who like the idea of having a sweet watch, but didn't want to pay a ridiculous amount of money for a couple of for dudes. One. A couple of dudes like us. I like mine. You like yours. They You've put got on two. their watch one wrist at a time, That's like a- like like just like us, like, like everybody regular people. Else. And then we do it as well. You you bought a you we, you got one, and then you bought one. I got a That's free correct. one. They sent us a free one. They're very nice to do that. Mm. And then I'm like. Got to get every color in this now. One so, on every wrist. One on every wrist. Yeah, that's it. Uh, they've sold over 1 million watches to 160 countries. And we can actually, we've got a 15% off offer code with free shipping and free returns. If you don't like it, you can be like, have this back. They're confident. They're, they're confident. Because you like them. They're confident that you won't. I've got a list of like stuff that I've got to buy in my phone and there's a very long list of movement watches. Okay, I'm not even exaggerating. I'm like, <laughs> this one in this color, the same one in the next color. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Uh, if you go to uh, mvmt.com slash weeklyplanet, you can get that 15% off. Uh, they've got a really clean design. You, you've mentioned that. Many compliments oh, all nice, around. Nice color what, combos. That's right. One's a, see, I, I won't stop talking about it. It's got a nice rose gold and it's got a, like a nylon strap. A, mm, 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 a gray <laughs> nylon strap. Yum, 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 yum. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> that's mvmt.com slash weeklyplanet. Join the movement. Mm-hmm. Red hot comic book movie news. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, official podcast of comicbookmovie.com, where we talk movies, comics, TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, my co host, Nick Mason. It's me! Yeah. This is an episode. It is an episode. It's a very special episode, Mason. What? How so? Because there's no news. Well, look, I feel... I've, because you, this is this is being filmed outside of time and space. Correct. Because you're in America right now. And recorded. Mm. Not filmed. I mean, audio. It's an yes. audio medium. That's sorry, what I go meant. On. Keep, I meant keep, audio film. Okay, right? sorry. I, I get you. I'm an, I'm an old school kind of guy. <laughs> sure, yeah. You used to say old audio filmed back in the day. Um, I was going to say, so so we don't know what the news is right now. No. But here's a little piece of news okay. that I, I just saw on the way here. So this is... This is- Way dated. This is this like is way dated, but I thought it was prior to this. But I, I think my, perhaps a lot of people probably missed this one. Sure. Um, but I feel it's also evergreen news. Is it Ben Affleck is in or out as Batman? Well, that's that's <laughs> number one. Who knows? It's uh, he's uh, he's Schro- Schroding as Batman. Yes. At any given time, he could be in or out of being Batman or directing Batman, or he's dead in a box. <laughs> yes. That's Ben Affleck for you. Uh, Terry Pratchett's unfinished novels destroyed by steamroller. What? So Terry Pratchett's uh, like hard drive, yeah. Like when he died, he had some unfinished work on a hard drive, and they, at the at the Great Dorset Steam Fair, ahead of the opening of a new exhibition about his life and work, oh no, they put it under a steamroller and crushed it, as was his his final wishes. Oh, it wasn't an accident. No, it wasn't an accident. No. <laughs> what hilarious. a weird set of circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> how did how did like somebody would have had to take the hard drive out and they're like, well, I'll I'll, I'll just put it in my bag for safekeeping. And I then, thought it was like a house demolition or something. Oh yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy style. Yeah, yeah. Maybe um, you're a fan of his work. Yeah, definitely. you're a fan of his destroyed work. Yeah. Do you reckon there's any chance this is going to get out eventually? Like some, but there's surely there's another copy. Somebody would have made. See, one. that's what I my assumption would be. Yeah. That's before they were like. 
before they were like, here's the ceremonial, here's the hard drive we're going to put it in front of the steamroller, I reckon somebody would have been like, I've just got to go to the bathroom, I'll be back in two minutes. And they've run out and they've plugged it into a laptop. Or and they've, they've done the old switcheroo. Done the old switcheroo. The Ocean's 12 frag- Fabergé egg switcheroo. Let's not get vulgar and talk about Ocean's 12, <laughs> all right, mate? <laughs> but uh, Neil Gaiman, close friend and collaborator, because they did that book, Good Omens, which is a delight. Yeah. Uh, told the Times that Pratchett had wanted whatever he was working on at the time of his death to be taken out along with his computers to be put in the middle of a road and for a steamroller to steamroll over them all. I love that. It's pretty good, right? Because a lot of the times they do release author's unfinished work and it's no good. And they'll it would've, get- It would have been something that they might have been like a first draft and- Yeah. Yeah. They'll get like Alan Dean Foster to finish it. Yeah, exactly. Or somebody, I don't know. He knows what he's doing. Mm. But um, then sometimes you you- I can't think of a good one. Now that Michael <laughs> Crichton's new book. How'd that go? I haven't read it. It's I think it's about uh It's about dragons. It's oh, called Imagine Dragon Dragons. Teeth. Yes, it's called Imagine Dragons. Mm. I'm gonna see I'm gonna write review and see what see what bloody comes up. Okay. Dragon teeth. See what they've done? They've just put a dinosaur skull on the cover. I mean, it's a dragon, nice, obviously. good cover. That'll do it. Uh, and that will get people. People will be like, "Oh my god, Michael Crichton's back with yeah. that." Oh, it's got a three point eight on Goodreads. Oh, so that sounds like a good read. That's better than average. It's yes. A be- well, then people on Goodreads are notoriously critical. I feel also. Are they? So, yeah. Because they're book snobs. They're book exactly. They're book <laughs> snobs. We are lucky. You cannot review. The Weekly Planet on Goodreads because we would get crushed <laughs> exactly. for our pronunciation, if nothing else. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that, I feel that's right up there with um, Hunter S. Thompson's ashes being shot out of a cannon. Right. But, yeah. Uh, you know, didn't somebody snort them as well? It's probably Johnny Depp <laughs> or Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway, that's a bit of news. They met in the middle. It was like uh, like Lady in the Tramp with his ashes. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right. I think we need to move our mics back a little bit because I'm hearing popping on both okay. ends. <laughs> Yeah, there we Speaking go. Speaking of popping on both ends, Johnny Depp and Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're popping on both Very ends. Very good, Mason. Very good. Oh, my goodness. So this is going to, just going to be it's going to be a topic episode and some letters. You thought of a fantastic topic. Yes, uh, because- the best topic. Because last week or several weeks ago or in the future, <laughs> yeah. I think somebody mentioned about feuds on, on this podcast and, I'm, and then I couldn't get out of my head what are the best- what are the best feuds in in Hollywood? Hollywood, Hollywood feuds, yeah. like these are onset movie feuds. We're talking yeah, about, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, so not characters. Yeah, not like wow, well, Vin Diesel and The Rock really went at it in that yeah. movie. Boy, Batman, this Batman, but and they this did Joker behind character. the scenes. That's true. Batman <laughs> and this Joker character, they don't care for each other. No, why don't they a uh, kiss and make up? But. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, like behind the scenes, which I, I feel is very enjoyable. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we've got a we've got a, a list. Well, oh, I've got, very I've got a good. List also, yeah. There's some ones here that I didn't know about, it and some and some very famous ones. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Do you want to start with the with the DC one? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Batman Forever. Oh yes, I love. There's this a one. couple that kind of come out of this. Do you know which one I'm talking about specifically? I'm hoping it is Jim Carrey and yes. Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Do you want to explain it? Uh so oh, hang on, I'll, I'll I'll bring it up. I haven't I haven't thought about that one in a while, but I'll. Uh... I've got the exact wording. If you okay, want. I, go I, ahead. I can do it if you yeah, want. Yeah, please do. Sure. So basically, they met at a restaurant uh, before filming started. For those people who don't know, two faces played by sorry, two faces played by Tommy Lee Tommy Jones. Jones and. Jim Carrey is the Riddler, mm-hmm. and they're both just very not good performances, I would say, <laughs> on, on the whole. He just kind of ace ventures it, and Tommy Lee Jones does a worse version of Jack Nicholson's He did Joker. it for his kids, I he think. He did, yeah, he did. Yeah. Has, has he ever done anything that ridiculous before or since? Uh, I guess if you could you could count Men in Black, but he's a very stoic kind of character Yeah, in exactly, that, so that's true. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put that in there. Can you think of anything? Like he didn't do like... Movie forty three or whatever. Or no, and like he's, that. yeah, exactly. And he's been mostly because he seems like I feel he would do well in like a police squad, naked gun, airplane kind right. of situation. Like he's a guy who who plays it so deadpan all the time that I feel if lunacy were happening around him, yeah, that yeah, would well, be well, great. Well, that's how uh, Leslie Nielsen started. Like he was a serious actor. Yeah, yeah, until, yeah. Was it Air- Airplane? The first one he did was that was the tongue in cheek. Before, was that before I think Naked so, yeah. Gun? I think it was. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Mm. Great. But no, I'm just looking at like the list of roles here and no, it's it's all, it's, it's Two-Face. It's, it's got to be. I mean, yeah, right, And that exactly. makeup even because it's the, because he's scarred, but he's got the exact, it's in the middle of his face. Yeah, right. The, uh, the, the thing. Anyway, the feud was uh, Tommy Lee Jones hates Jim Carrey. So Jim Carrey went up to him in a restaurant before filming and he said, the blood drained from Tommy Lee Jones's face in such a real, in such a way that I realized uh, 
that he was in pain or something. And he got up kind of shaking, hugged me and said, I hate you. I really don't like you. And I was like, wow, okay, what's going on, man? And And he he said, (laughs) I cannot sanction your buffoonery. (laughs) That's, I mean, that's, uh, that's amazing, right? Yeah. What? This is this is this is during filming, I believe. I was during filming. This is before it says the night before a big scene, so they were in the midst of filming, and they both are like, like, imagine you're Tommy Lee Jones, and you you just do like you, you're doing your U.S. Marshals, you're doing your whatever baseball movie he was probably in. <laughs> you, you're doing all this these serious roles where you're like an old sheriff. You're just trying to. He loves being an old sheriff, and, and you and you. Then all of a sudden you're being thrown into this Technicolor cartoon world where there are like weird glowing skeleton cars driving <laughs> up wall, like buildings and everybody's wearing weird. You, you, you've just been you've been unsewn from your leopard print suit <laughs> and you've spent four hours getting your makeup put on and four hours getting your makeup taken off and then you've done a twelve hour day or whatever. Yeah, and you're like finally got it. I'm, I'm getting away from this. Getting away from it. I'm gonna. Go out with my family. I'm going to have a no- nice at my favorite quiet restaurant. Enough of this nobody knows. He's, he's not a guy who goes like, I'm going to go to the the Chateau Marmont and I'm going to be there and everybody's going to see me and, you know, I'm going to- He the just paparazzi. wants a well-done just, steak. Just, he wants a well-done steak <laughs> and a milk and he gets out and he goes to a quiet little restaurant. He's like, ah, and they know him and they're like, the usual Mr. Mr. Tommy Lee Jones. And he's like, yes, please. please. yeah. And he's like, and he just sits down and then all of a sudden he hears honka honka or whatever. <laughs> You know, and he probably Jim just rubber Cam- band of a man. Yeah, it just rolls, and he's probably yeah, he's probably wearing a t-shirt that says "Ask me about being the Riddler and Batman forever" or something. Did you say "Ask me about"? Yeah, I probably ask me about. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? They probably at that point in his career, Jim Carrey was probably what would happen is the doors of the restaurant would open and like the back end of a bull would would roll in on wheels, and then he would emerge from it. <laughs> Pet detective style, <laughs> and fireworks would go off. How good would that be? Do you think that's a cruel thing to say to a person? I cannot sanction your buffoon. Yeah, like just say, "Hey, man, good to see you." Like, do you have? Does he I hate him that much? Maybe, where he but has I, to- I guess it depends how far into filming it was. Yeah, he was. He was also peak Jim Carrey at this time. Absolutely, that's he right. Was, there was. There's never been so much Jim Carrey in the world. And this would have been also. They're like, okay, you're known for Ace Ventura. You know. The mask. The mask. We need. This is a superhero movie, and you're a super villain. We need you to ramp it all the way up. Yeah. And this is probably like he's probably gets in a character like six a.m. and he's in it the whole day. Yeah. Kind he of gets thing. in his spandex and he's screaming at himself in a mirror to yeah. get him get himself hyped up. Uh-huh. Anyway, I like that a lot. It's not so much a feud. It's more one guy hates another guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so- I wonder if they've mended because Jim I don't Carrey, think they have. Because out. Jim Carrey's a serious actor now. He is, yeah. But I don't think they. He's something's going on with him. Oh yeah, yeah. He seems like there's some. I don't know. There's some deep dark thoughts in that man. Well, I mean, that's true. But I mean, he he was the the biggest actor in the world for he was yeah for some time. And he and he there was a moment where he was a you know people took him seriously as a serious actor. I would say people still do now. Like he gets, yeah. mm-hmm. but you know, like the Truman Show, people were like, wow, this guy's really. That's he's true. Got some, he's got some range. Mm-hmm. Have you seen me, myself, and Irene? No. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yep. Got another one? Uh, let's have- This This one, this is a TV one. Okay. And I do not watch the show. Right. But it fascinates me. So, did, did you ever watch this TV sh- series, The Good Wife? I, I know what it is, but I yeah. It's got the guy from Sex and the City and The Good Wife. Yeah. So- Does, is it, Doesn't he go to jail- and then she has to be a lawyer or is a lawyer or something. I don't know. We've got Juliana Margulies, right. who plays an attorney, right? And then we've got uh, a woman working as her investigator. So that's Archie Punjabi, right? Right. And they're best friends until uh, like the end of season two, um, one sleeps with the other one's husband. Like it's, <gasps> this is the big reveal. And so they're like, they have this big falling out on on screen. There's as much bloody drama behind the scenes as bloody on screen. I know, right? right? Well, that's that's on screen. That's bloody- oh, that was on screen. That was on screen. Oh, that's okay. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was on screen. So that's that's explicable, right? Right. So that okay. makes sense. But then the two characters make up. Yeah. On screen, but then the actors until uh, Punjabi leaves the series. Yeah. 
the two characters don't share a scene again for 51 episodes. How is that possible? Well, they're just on the phone with each other, these two best friends. Oh. Every interaction they have is on the phone. Why? Well, that's the thing. Okay, so I look, because it, it recently came up, like, eventually, this was when the, when the actor departed from the show, they, inter- they the, actually, they do, they do have one scene together. It's right at the, like, their final scene together. Yeah. They're at a bar, yeah. like, sitting next to each other at a bar. But it's filmed in green screen. So they don't actually sit together. You're getting paid. I don't understand how you could hate somebody that much. Yeah, right. Exactly. But I guess forced to work with them every day. I, I guess. Yeah, but not but even you're not that. even. 51 episodes. That's a long didn't time. Interact. So anyway, here's the... So there was like a Television Critics Association like interview series. Sure. And uh, Punjabi was there. And somebody said... Somebody asked, why... Did you stop sharing uh, scenes together? And why on that last episode were you like you know, on a green screen together? Yeah. Like what was what was the reason? Why why were you why do you spend so much time in this whole series not sharing the scene? Even though it makes no sense that your character is supposed to be you know best friends and then they're not friends and then they're friends again. Yeah. And she's like, I love playing the role. I had such a good time on it, and it's a role that's very special to me. I'm so thrilled to be on another show. I think it's. <laughs> In terms of anything that happened on The Good Wife, I think it's only respectful for it to stay on The Good Wife. It was time for me, for many reasons, to unzip the boots and step into another show. But I can tell you, for those of you who missed the boots, I do wear a pair of knee-high boots on Blind Spot. That's the next series she went to. That's not an answer. It's not That's an answer, nothing. right? Yeah. And apparently there was like an audible sigh, like from everybody in the room. <laughs> God. So we'll never know. Yeah. Because... That's the code of the good wife. What stays in the good wife? Yeah. What happens in the good wife? Uh, stays asked in the good about wife. it by Us Weekly. Yeah. Uh, they said again, green screen technology. What's going? Why couldn't you just be in the same room? Don't talk said, about boots. Y- you know, I can't answer that. It's not fair to me for me to answer those decisions as much as I want to. But those decisions are made by the producers. I'm not privy to those decisions. All I know is I'm very grateful to the kings, the producers, for right, making right. the decision to cast me. Okay. Yeah. Diplomatic. Why? It's very diplomatic, yeah. right? Yeah, it's it's a weird way of kind trying kind of saying it. Wouldn't you just go, yeah, I just I can't. Yeah, that's right? that's how, what I would say. Yeah. I don't know, but I mean to be like, hey, why why can't why did you film this on green screen? Yeah, can't answer it. They didn't tell me. <laughs> why? Yeah, they didn't, yeah, exactly. They didn't. Yeah. You, are, you, are you saying a? There's no feud, and b? You have literally no curiosity about that. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty great, mm. right? I want to see that scene and see whether it actually looks like green screen. It's, I, I watched it. It's, it's very convincing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so people, did, was this, did people know about this at the time? Did yeah. it, or did, were people watching it suddenly realize that these guys were never on the same? Oh, like, was it a slow a realization? Question. Like, it's been 10 episodes and they haven't been in the same room. Look, I think fans of the show, how long do you think it would have taken you? I think I probably never would have picked up on it. Probably not, no. I mean, yeah, I, mm, I don't know. Well, nah, also, I didn't watch it, so I don't- <laughs> well, It's true, yeah. I don't, I don't know how good a friend- I guess they're best friends, I guess. I think I would be constantly waiting for them to like meet up again in a scene. Right, yeah. Never, like, I guess it's sort of like, you know, Game of Thrones style, where there, there's one character on one continent, another character on the other continent, and you're like, well, they're going to meet back up. And they're on the up. phone to each other. Exactly. You're like, well, they're going to meet up eventually. It's but you. It's weird because it's- yeah, it's not Game of Thrones. It's not Game of Thrones. They probably it's all work in the same office or something. It's a different yeah. show, precisely. Oh, that's bizarre. Mm. Uh, have you, you've obviously heard about the, the Michael Bay um, feud with Megan Fox. Yes. Which wasn't so much of a feud, but she was talking about what it was like to work with him on set. And she said, he's like Napoleon and he wants to create this insane, infamous madman reputation. He wants to be like Hitler on his set. Oh, boy. And he is. A so Hitler he- that makes you wash his car. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So he's a nightmare to work work with. He's Napoleon and he wants to create blah, 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 whatever. He said that. Oh, no, I said that already. Uh, so basically, Spielberg said, you should fire her right now for saying that. And he did. <laughs> so, well. well, she wasn't in three. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wait, so, but what's the... Do we have do we have Spielberg saying who said that Spielberg said that? Because that seems very I wouldn't say it's unspielbergy. Yeah. But it's it it's it feels like it's it's against Steven Spielberg's public persona to be like, somebody said something mean about you, fire him. Yeah, but I guess it's to him like a hot like his button is calling someone a Nazi. Oh well, yeah, that's so. True. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd imagine if it, you know, if that's like you said, if that's if that's even true. But we even if he didn't say that, she didn't come back. 
That's she, true. She wasn't. There was the other Megan Fox who, who and then she was. Re- that one was replaced by a third Megan Fox. <laughs> yeah, who was then replaced by another Megan Fox. Wait, how many Megan Foxes are there? Okay, been? there was Megan Fox. Yep. There was Rosie, Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Ridley. Uh, yep. Then there was uh, the one who was seventeen. Or whatever. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. And okay, the last right. one was the the British, the British Megan one. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, they've they've all got. They're all just golden. <laughs> <laughs> Glistening. Why is everyone so glistening in those films? It's very upsetting. Isn't it though? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's not so much a... F- I mean, I've heard that before. Like, uh, Michael Bay sets are just, like, ca- like controlled chaos. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know, it's madness. And it's it's like a thousand degrees because they're shooting in the heat and, and and whatnot. Yeah. You know, David O. Russell uh, apparently fights with everybody. He fist fights in some cases, right? Uh, George, George Clo- Clooney. And him had a heated mm-hmm. argument. Yes. Uh, Clooney told him to calm down and... They started yelling at each other and Clooney pinned him against the wall and there was a tussle. I want to see that footage. Yeah, me too. Because the tussle's never dignified. Have you ever seen like a real fight in the street? Yeah, they're never any good, are they? Yeah. It's just, it's guys like pulling shirts over each other's heads and rolling around. (laughs) And it's a lot of, our friends over at Auntie Dawn have a sketch. I think it's probably on YouTube. It's called The Men Who Fight Like Kangaroos. Yeah, yes, yeah. And it's, it's quite like that. There's a lot of... There's just, there's some scuffling and then the people go back to their own corners yeah. and then they sling some insults and there's a, and there's a guy who's who's like it's not worth it mate it's yeah. not worth it there's, there's a lot of exactly. that exactly there's one of those in the kangaroo kingdom as well <laughs> yeah that's it so but the, the most famous one which was the audio was leaked uh, was uh, him and what was her name I can't remember, I don't have a name hang on let me let me find this yeah, out sure. uh, just quickly I was gonna say what like. If Clooney pinned him up against a wall, yeah, like who's this guy that is starting fights with people and then he can't back it up, right? You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Or is he one of those guys? You know, there's always somebody who's always they're all full of attitude because they've never been in a fight, right? Yeah. You know those guys. I, I, mean, I know. That's what he is. I know a guy like that who uh-huh. um I I used to work with McDonald's mm-hmm. and uh, oh he yes, does how's he doing? Now. Well, he's fine. He does okay, finance right. or something. Yeah. So he's a psychopath. Well, it, at the time he was. Like, we, we never had a problem. We got along really well, but he was really fiery, right? Uh-huh. Constantly. Like, you'd go out and you'd always be like, this guy's going to get us all beat up yeah, kind right. of thing. Anyway, what eventually happened years later, I found out because a friend of mine ran into him. He uh, He's completely mallowed because what happened, he, he did it to a guy in, in the street, a guy he didn't know, and the guy, like, kicked the shit out of him, like, right. put him in hospital. Gave like, me old David O. Russell. Yeah, like, broke his face. Wow. Like, really messed him up. And That's so, his face. It's fine now, oh, okay, it cool. seems to be, but so he's just the opposite of that now. He's like, I was an idiot and I shouldn't have, right. whatever. So How's that other guy, though? It's probably spoiling for another fight. <laughs> he probably broke his foot kicking this guy's head in, mm. I'd imagine. So, yeah, so I'd say don't start fights with people, I nice. guess. Is the- <laughs> but anyway, so sorry, it was uh, Lily Tomlin, and you can find this on set. This is You can see that – I'll read the rant out. Please. There's a C-bomb in it, which I'll avoid, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some language in this. I'm just trying to uh, trying to fucking help you. You understand me? I'm well, just this being. Is a, David this is David O. Russell screaming at her. I'm just being a fucking collaborator. I'm trying to help you figure out the fucking picture, okay, bitch? I'm not here to be fucking yelled at. I haven't been working on this thing for three fucking years to have some fucking C bomb mm. yell at me in front of the crew. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you, bitch. Oh boy. <laughs> so that you can find that. Yeah. But the the best part of that story is if you, in Mike Babiglia's, I think it's his last stand up special. He hosted some awards show uh-huh. and he was to present uh, David O. Russell with an award and he said and he said in the immortal words of David O. Russell and he read that exact quote Brilliant. with David O. Russell in the audience. Nice. And the quote from it, uh, David O. Russell was like, "Ah, oh, you know what are you gonna do? It's all good fun or whatever. You have to laugh at your mistakes." But in this comedy special, apparently he left. Good. And he wasn't going to come back. Like yeah, he good. was, it was furious that that he that he brought this up. And, nice. uh, but eventually, he, he kind of came around. That's. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to have. We're just having a bit of fun. What does he think this is? That's madness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, if you're constant, it, I guess my, one of my questions is because oftentimes, you know, the the director brings his own crew, like it's his cinematographer and his yeah. producers and whatever. What are they he's doing? Always, like if yeah. he's constantly doing this, are they all like? Are they like? Do they seem? Do they seem fire up? And they're like, "Oh, time to get a coffee." Yeah, maybe, off maybe we go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess maybe you're just used to it. I mean, it's a job, isn't it? Yeah. Like if you're the David O. Russell's cinematographer, then that's you know you don't really want to lose that gig, do you? That's true. Yeah, I don't know. I think you. I think you should be able to yell at actors. So I think that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you know about the the Kevin Smith Bruce Willis. I was going to say I, I just I just remember this, uh, so I found it uh, in a 2003 Vanity Fair profile of the actor George Clooney. Yeah, uh, Russell contributed to the piece. George Clooney can suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> That was his co- was and that this is the very end? This, sorry, yeah, it's right at the end. That's yeah. great. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> at some point, you have to acknowledge that you're the problem. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. surely, I mean, imagine he's like, every day he comes home from work or whatever to his wife or, what, or he talks to his co-workers and he's like, or he talks to another director and he's like, man, don't you hate it when George Clooney gives you some lips so you got to... Hustle. You got to you got to tussle with him on set. Then he flings you up against the wall. What do you reckon about that, Steven Soderbergh, director of the Ocean's <laughs> movies? And he's like, "What? No, we had a really good time that on was those a fun movies. set. Fun set. Yeah. The little guy was always doing acrobatic stuff on things. Ocean's Twelve was such a fun movie to make. We made a not good movie. That's right. We, we still like, made it because it was so much fun. Yeah. You're right. I guess that. I, but you know, these people, I guess, have that. They got a singular vision that they kind of want to stick to. You yeah. Know? Uh, oh, in an interview after the, the Lily T- Lily Tomlin thing, yeah, Tomlin said she loves Russell, adding he was a, under a tremendous amount of pressure. Russell said the two love each other and we would work together tomorrow. Bet they wouldn't. Have yeah, they worked I, together I bet they, they, they've never done it again. I would okay. imagine. There you go. Yeah. Good lord. Uh, Kevin, you were going to say Kevin Smith? Yeah, yeah, Kevin Smith tells a story. You can look this up where he just openly like bad mouths Bruce Will- Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. But apparently he is a prick to work with. He recently got fired from a Woody Allen film because he just didn't. Right. You, you see it in, you see his lack of caring in film. Oh, sure, you, yeah. re- you really do. And Cop Out is a prime example. That's the blandest movie ever made. But I don't think he could have saved that. You think it was just boring regardless? That's so, put anybody else in that role. Even Yeah, no, look, even somebody, t- that movie is set in Brooklyn Right. And it starts with the Beastie Boys, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. I th- Good, like it's, great. <laughs> no, but that's like it's the most un- that's the most uninspired song choice yeah. you could possibly Sure, that's that's fair. But also like he was apparently like tearing pages out of scripts and being like, nah, we won't we won't film this, we won't film this, it's pointless. He called it like Chuffer or something like that. What, like, what did like he call it? Chuffer or something. Is that like a that. term? No, it's a term that he may have coined. But oh, it's wow. just stuff where he's like, "Nah, this is just stuff we don't need in this film that I'm an actor in." So I'm right. just going to make the call that I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. See, I've always, I've always been on the fence about about this one because, because again, mm. I like Bruce Willis. I feel is famous for phoning in the last ten years of his career. Yep. yep. Well, just retire, man. Come on. Yeah. What are you yeah doing? Sure. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like maybe Cop Out was the one. That, 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 broke that broke him, him in a way because <laughs> it's so bad. Have but you seen it? Yeah, I have seen it. It's one of the it's one of the movies that it, it's a it's a movie where I had the realization you don't have to watch every movie till the end. <laughs> Did you actually stop it? Yeah, I, I was like because every other movie I've just watched till the end, and for this one I'm, I watched it for about forty five minutes, and then I realized it's supposed to be a comedy, but I haven't laughed at any point. It's and so a bit I'm like, where Tracy Morgan punches a kid in the dick. Yeah, but- still not funny. <laughs> But then I'm like, well, I'll just what I'll do is I'll just watch it at double speed, just yeah. so I can figure, I can see how the plot unfolds. Yeah. And I did that for about another ten minutes, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Who cares? Like, there's never going to be a scenario in which it's going to be imperative that I know what the plot of Cop Out was. Well, now it is. This is that moment. Yeah, I know, right? How did it end? It was about a baseball card. Yeah, it was about a collectible baseball it doesn't card. Get shot but through I the think, baseball card at the end. I don't know because I, oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, I have right? seen the whole thing. Because he yeah. has to. I don't think it's that bad. Look, it's not. It's not. Have you good. seen it though? Yeah, it's very. Huh. It's just very bland. So, but that's worse than a bad. Yeah, movie. it is. In if a it was spectacularly yeah. bad, I yeah. would forgive it. Yeah, that's probably true. But yeah. it's just so. It's a very generic. Cop and there's a moment in. There's, yeah, there's a moment in it where like the bad guy gets the drop on. Is it the train? Station? Yeah, there's a scene in the train on the yeah. train where the bad guys get the drop on Bruce Willis. Because he's not even, or one of them, because they're not even basically competent at being cops. Because Do doesn't he that? drop his gun and Bruce Willis like looks down? Or yeah, something like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's atrocious. He would have been a cop for like thirty years. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, maybe he was just a cop that didn't care anymore. That's maybe well, Bruce. Maybe was that. Bruce Willis method acting. He was just a ah, oh, drop my gun. I guess. I think this film though really like that was a turning point for Kevin Smith because he also hates that film. Yeah, and he was like, you know what, I I could because that movie still made money, right? And he got offered a lot of stuff on the back of it because it, it was competently enough made where you're like, <laughs> yeah, you can make a movie that Brett Ratner makes, like because it's that kind of film. Yeah, you know, absolutely, it's just like that's a, true. Yeah, 
and he went and he went the other way and went, you know what? I'm just going to make things that I want to make my own ideas. Yeah. You know, with- I guess it's no less entertaining than like a Brett Ratner cop. Well, film. that's what I mean. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, but I guess maybe I went in expecting it to be. Something. Something. And, and it, it was, was nothing. It was, nothing. <laughs> it was absolutely nothing. But I suggest people look up that story. Because the other thing is you don't often see directors or anybody in Hollywood just openly bad-mouthing someone and not backing down. That's true, I yeah. think that's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on his special, like, I'm 40 and I'm fat or whatever. What's mm. that one called? I think that's what it's called. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, that's he sort of, I think it's on YouTube. But it's, right, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. Great. I like it a lot. Nice. I don't. I barely remember it. <laughs> uh, apparently, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams hated each other on the what notebook, were they together? The Notebook. Oh yeah, okay. Because yeah, it's weird because they're in love in that film, but they, it's true. But they're not in love in real life. It's all green screen. Wow, and puppets, that's incredible. Marionettes. <laughs> wow, let's see. That's how good they are at acting. That's exactly it. And I think they dated anyway afterwards. They they kind of uh, well, that might explain it. Too. Fixed it all up. You got another one, Mason? Ah, uh, okay. This this is outside of our wheelhouse, but I think it's. Just is it another I- good wife one? Because <laughs> that's very outside. Yeah, very outside. Of now this one, it just, it's just I just find the pairing odd. Okay, Bjork and Lars von Trier. Lars von Trier of, of Nymphomaniac fan. What were they? And, and wacky get? musician Bjork. Bjork was in a movie called Dancer in the Dark, right? Where she was a like um she was an immigrant worker and she was saving money because her son needed an eye operation, but she was also going blind. Like, everybody in the family was going blind, and it was real depressing. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, anyway, so- was it, Did everybody have a degenerative eye disease? Yeah, I think that's Eastern Europe for you. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I like it. Like, Björk was just not- Like, it's her. It's the film. She's starring in the film, but someday she's just not showing up at work. She spat on him at one point. That's not cool. Uh, and one point she said, never work with a Dane because he will eat your soul. Never work with a Dane. A Dane, because he's Danish. Oh, right. <laughs> Not a I'm, great Dane. I'm like, da- yeah, I'm thinking Dane Dahan. What, what are we talking Don't about? Don't work it? with a Dane Judy Dench. Yeah, sure. Don't yeah. work with a Dane Edna. No, definitely not. Mm. Deceptive. Yeah. Oh, wow. Lars von Trier uh, responded by also skipping days at work. Yeah. The director of the film. Yeah, well, why not? Just not showing up, you know? <laughs> Pretty good, right? I love it. I didn't even know she was... Of course, she's an actor. Well, that's was- a, well, that's a one film. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. But I just like the idea of two real weirdos. Yeah. Just two real. You like think they get along? Yeah. Right. They, they, you know what? They should have got a different weirdo. They should, they should have got Tilda Swinton. Probably she seems very professional. Yeah. See, so that that, that amuses me because I'm I I don't know the like clearly there's some sort of vague Eastern European racial tension happening yes. there. But to an outsider. Whatever Björk is and the Danish people are the same. She not the same to me. She might be, I don't know. No, Icelandic. she's Icelandic. She's Icelandic. She's Icelandic. Yeah, she's Icelandic. I was say, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Swan dress. That's swan. What, I what a weirdo. I remember the swan dress. And I remember that first song she had and somebody does a backflip on a wall. Yeah, yeah. That's all Pretty I remember. Good stuff. Do you know Richard Gere and Stallone hate each other? What were they in? Uh, well, they weren't in. They, they Apparently in the movie The Lords of Flatbush. I don't know yep. what that is. Mm-hmm. It's from... It's from the like the late seventies, early eighties. Uh the part of the part of Chico. Uh, oh yeah, the famous part of Chico in Lords which, of Flatbush. Uh, Perry King ended up playing was supposed to be Richard Gere. This is this is Stallone's side of the story. He said he would strut around in an oversized motorcycle jacket like it was a bit like it was the baddest night at the round table. One day during an improv, he grabbed me. We because there was a they were simulating a fight scene and he got a little carried an away. An improv fight scene. My I goodness. Know. I told him in a gentle fashion to lighten up, but he was completely in character and impossible to deal with. Uh, they were rehearsing in Coney Island, so we decided to take a break. I was eating a hot dog in the back seat of a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> and he Unnecessary co- <laughs> detail, but all right. And he collapsed. We get it. You can afford a Toyota. <laughs> in the 70s. Yeah. yeah. Boy. That's, oh, that was a foreign import in the <laughs> yeah, 70s. I, I get it, it now, was. yeah. I was eating a hot dog and he climbs in with half a chicken covered in mustard and grease, nearly dripping it out of I'm the sorry, alum- half a chicken. <laughs> half a chicken. In a bag, one assumes. <laughs> uh, nearly dripping out of the aluminium wrapper it was in. I oh. said, "I said, yeah, that makes sense. That's where you, you keep a chicken warm in. Sure do. Uh, that thing is going to drip all over the place. And he said, don't worry about it. I said, if that gets on my pants, you're going to know about it. Or my Toyota. <laughs> he proceeds to bite into, into the chicken and a small greasy river of mustard lands on my thigh. I elbowed him in the side of the head and basically pushed him out of the car. The director had to make a choice. Had to make a choice. One of us had to go. One of us had to stay. Richard was given his walking papers. And to this day, he seriously dislikes me. He even thinks I'm the individual, individual responsible for the gerbil rumor. 
Not true, <laughs> oh. but that's the rumor. Wow. Uh, the gerbil rumor, everybody must know, right? Yeah. So it's basically Richard Gere was admitted into hospital because he had a gerbil stuck In inside him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, do you think it's possible that Stallone did start that rumor? It sounds like he started that rumor. Ooh. Uh, well, I mean, how many enemies does Richard Gere have? That's you know a good what I mean? question. I don't. I don't know mm. how many. But this was all. So what? What we're saying is there's a. A potential career ruining rumor was created by Sylvester Stallone. Yes, because he got some <laughs> mustard some from mustard a, from a chicken a, from a chicken dripped on his leg in the back seat of a Toyota. Yeah, yeah, that's reminiscent of the uh, I, the story I, I know of the early days of Guns N' Roses, which I think I've mentioned on this show. So before. we're slashed. They were. They the, used to live. Drop. They used to. No. They also all used to live in like a storage unit. Right. Yeah. Like Slash and Duff used to live in like a storage, like one of those roll up door yeah, storage yeah. units. And one day, apparently, like. One of them took a girl home, home to, <laughs> to the, the storage, storage unit, <laughs> right? And was having sex with a girl and the other one got some fluid <laughs> on their leg and one and they went, man, we got to get a bigger place. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, right? <laughs> Didn't the last time they spoke, weren't they driving in the car together uh-huh. and Axel Rose just jumped out of the car and kind of rolled down the street and that was like the last time they spoke? I don't know. That yeah. sounds plausible. Yeah, I think that's what happened. When was this? I think they're all back together now because they've they all run be. out of money. Yeah, yeah. I think they're touring again as Guns N' Roses. So Buckethead's out? <laughs> yeah, Buckethead's out. <laughs> Apparently, he's technically very proficient. I'm Buckethead. sure he is, yeah. Like, he's one of those multi, multi, multi instrumentalists. Do you think he's like. But he's got a bucket on his head. But do you think he needed a gimmick? Because he's like, slash is slash. That's slash, true. Slash, you could. You, anybody recognizes Slash. That's true. It's got a distinct look. You so can, it's you can, head, exactly. Like, <laughs> you can. Hell, you can. But you need. If you want to be an iconic musician, mm. you have to be able to. Somebody has to be able to wear you as a Halloween costume. Yes. Slash, you can do it. He's got the hat. He's got the long hair. There's he's got the glasses. It, yeah. He's got the leather pants. Buckethead's got a bucket on his head. Yeah. Ingve Malmsteen. What's he look like? <laughs> I don't know. Who that Joey is. Satriani. Are they the other members? No, they're the other. They're like weird guitar virtuosos. <laughs> you know those people who are technically very good at playing the guitar, <laughs> yeah, but yes. who cares? Write a song. Song, you idiots. <laughs> like Slava Glagorian. Yeah, like Slava Glagorian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Got yeah. another one? This one I, I feel we've mentioned many times. It is one of my favorites. But okay. I didn't know the name of the other person involved. Right. Until now. Um, so it's Shane Hurlbutt. I don't know who that is. And Christian Bale. Oh, right. So Shane yeah, Hurlbutt yeah. is the director of photography of Terminator Salvation. What a film. And again, this is another leaked audio one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Why get so worked up <laughs> over this film of all others? So this, 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 there's, a, there's a very long piece of leaked audio, which I've listened to many a time. <laughs> and every time I hear it, I, I decide I love another bit more. My favorite another. bit's the scuffle where he's going, yeah, where right? you hear Christian Bale yeah. <laughs> go. So basically what happens is... Christian Bale's doing his acting. Yeah. And then Hurlbutt, the director of photography, walks through his line of sight. Yes. So, which suggests to me that Christian Bale is acting at nobody. Yeah, well, that's a lot like, of that. Like, well, we don't know the context, but it sounds like he's not acting with another person in a scene. He's doing a one shot to nothing. I think it might be the bit where he's talking into the radio, where right. he's like, oh, the resistance and the. Oh, well, you need some incredible acting for that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, is, I, would that be distracting somebody walking into your line of sight? I guess it would be. So, does, on a film set, I'm, I mean, sure, you know, because obviously Christian Bale was doing this for free and he's not a professional actor. That's actually a good point. Yeah. My favorite part of it is actually how he keeps his American accent for yes, the Yes, right. Exactly. That's <laughs> fascinating, isn't it? I, I respect- Doesn't him. even break character. And when he does interviews, like if he's Batman or whatever, he keeps the American accent for the interviews. Isn't it interesting? Why, why do you think he does that? I think it's probably because his natural Welsh accent is garbage. That's probably true. Right? <laughs> Well, what's Catherine Zeta Jones's natural accent? Hello. Have you ever heard it? No. Yeah. No, I'm sure we have. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I think she's she's more kind of she does more British accent. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, mm. she doesn't look Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, what is my fa- oh my favorite initially was the one where he goes, "Oh, good <laughs> for you." That part. That is. That's pretty good. That's really uh, nice. The tirade continues for four minutes. Oh, he ke- he keeps saying how they're done professionally. That's true, which yeah. is probably true because I don't. Do you think he is a nightmare, and that's why it was leaked? Do you think so, like, like somebody must not like Christian Bale to have leaked that? Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah, I guess so. But I mean, also, 
Because if you liked him, you wouldn't release that, would you? A big, maybe for money. Yeah, maybe for money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was going to say that, that my next favorite part was he mind, but we can't see I him because it, yeah. it's just audio. But somebody must have kept those cameras rolling. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe if he'd, if he'd done it again, if he had another outburst, I reckon they would have kept the cameras rolling for that. But the part where clearly he's miming a man prancing in front of his line of sight where he goes, it, did it, did it, did it. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I love that. Uh, okay, this this is a piece I didn't know. Um, he, he publicly apologised a few days yes, later. Yes, he did, yeah. He called yeah. into Los Angeles radio station K-Rock. Which accent? The home of the rock. Pro- yeah. American, because he's calling him a K-Rock. <laughs> yeah, man. you're right. Yeah. yeah. And he said he acted like a punk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, at least he apologised. Do you think he would have apologised if it didn't come out? No. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> Why would you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people have meltdowns about it happens, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I, I do like how he was going to fight him. That's like, true, Because yeah. the other guy must have just been like... Because the other guy doesn't really say anything. You don't see him fire up. Yeah. He's just pretty kind of calm about the whole thing. Uh-huh. But yeah. I think that that would be a case of... Because the director of photography can be fired. Yes. You know what I mean? But you can't... Like, if it came down to... If they physically had a fight and they had to be restrained... Hey, man, it's not yeah. so worth it, man. <laughs> then... And they had to go in a room together and hash it out. They would have said, "Listen, DOP, you have to go. You're gone because Bale's the talent." Yeah, well, you know? yeah, you're probably right. Think of how many accents he knows. Oh, two. At least two accents. <laughs> he can't even do Welsh anymore. That's it's right. British and American. That's <laughs> all he's got left. Yeah, I love it. Mm. Uh, apparently, James Franco went real method on An An Anap- Annapolis An Anna- Annapolis Annapolis, yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, I know. Okay, I've written it wrong here, so I'm not. I wasn't sure how it. Uh, yeah, because it was with Tyrese Gibson. Oh yes, from Fast and Furious fame, and it, it, in an interview, uh, he said, "I respect method actors, but he never snapped out of character. Whenever we get into the ring for the boxing scenes, okay, so apparently that movie was about boxing. All right, uh, and even during practice, he was full on hitting me. So, huh? That's not very cool, is it? Yeah, right. <laughs> to hit another man. Yeah, but see, that's. That's that's Franco, I feel. He's so in it, isn't he? Because he's always... Well, he's admitted since then. He's like, yeah, I, I took it too far. Yeah. Like, I went too method. Because yeah. he's always... That's Frank. That's classic Franco. He's always crossing the line, but what's a what's life and what's a performance, man? And now he just does things. He does movies ironically. <laughs> yeah, everything he does is ironically or some sort of experiment. <laughs> yeah. Like you'll phone in a performance on a massive blockbuster film yeah. just because, or he'll just appear. He appeared on, didn't he appear on Days of Our Lives? Did he? He was briefly on a on a soap opera, I believe. That's great. Mm. Yeah. Do you know um, Stallone and Schwarzenegger? Though they ah, uh, still yeah. Okay. They recently starred in a film. They did a uh, Escape Plan, but for years they were bitter rivals. That sounds generic. Yeah, Escape it is. Plan. They're, they have to get out of a prison, but it's a boat. All right. I love a Stallone prison and escape movie. Yeah, you, he's done yeah, at least same. that one in Lockout or Lock Up. Yeah, but they also had to escape in Tango and Cash. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, it's true, Mason. It is true. But uh, so, so it's not technically like on set, but they were always trying to one up each other. And Stallone, they're friends now. But Stallone said in an interview that Schwarzenegger would trick him into roles, so he would find out. He would get word that like, oh, he's going to do stop or my mom will shoot. Yeah. So his agent's like, Stallone, you have to do this because if you don't get it, Arnold's going to do it and you're going to look like an idiot. Uh-huh. So that's why he did that movie. Huh. Yeah. Wow. And that's why he did, he did Rhinestone. He did a- <laughs> Oh, this has happened more than once. Apparently, <laughs> That's yeah. fascinating. I think he directed Rhinestone as well. And do you think what happens is he gets in there, he muscles his way and his agent comes into the, the, you know, the casting agent and he's like- Stallone's going to do this contracts now. Yes. We'll do it. We'll un- what does Schwarzenegger want? We'll do it for a million less. And then he gets in there and he signs on the dotted line. And then you just see Schwarzenegger's giant head peeking up <laughs> like from an outside window. And he's like, gotcha. Gotcha. It wasn't, uh, he didn't direct actually. It was Bob Clark. Oh. But that's, yeah, I'd, I'd find that. Also, I would say that Schwarzenegger is better at picking, picking roles that suits him than Stallone was. Uh-huh. Stallone tried to, a bunch of different stuff. Like he tried comedies and musicals. He and- tried things that weren't Rocky. Yes, he did. Mm. Like Rambo. Like Rambo. <laughs> yeah. He did. Remember the one he did? A, he did like a mob style comedy. No. Yeah. So, but I think, yeah. I And initially. I think, Wait, who was he in that? Was he a mob guy? He was a mob guy. It was uh, all no about the that. family. I remember it was a, I watched it, in, it was like a midday movie when I was oh, like right, 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, I, I, I just think that's amusing. Those guys. What else, Mason? Uh, what about uh, Wesley Snipes? On Famous Blade Crazy Man on Blade 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So it was him and David Goyer, I believe? Yes. Directed that one, right? Yeah. 
Um, Patton Oswalt tells that story yeah, really he's, well. He, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. I think I think maybe the the two things, the two great things about casting comedians in like supporting roles in in dramas and action movies is a once you get good at comedy, you're also good at dramatic roles. Yeah, but also they're very good at retelling yes. embarrassing stories from from set. Mm. So. Uh, Snipes initially. I think this was. Do you think this was Wesley Snipes' descent into madness, or do you think he was already mad? I think he's been mad for for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he initially thought that Wesley Snipes. Uh, he initially thought that David Goyer was a, a racist, right? Because apparently there was a guy, like a black actor on set. He came on, and he was wearing. I think he was just like a punk, and he had a shirt on that said "garbage." Right. It was just like the the and so the band, maybe I don't know, but that's the thing. Like Wesley Wesley Snipes assumed that David Goy had personally put that actor in that <laughs> shirt, and then had him parade in front of Wesley Snipes as if to say, "Black people are garbage." Clever, very clever, right? Subtle. A real racist would. That's right, exactly. That's probably- right. A real racist would go the extra mile. He wouldn't imply. He'd be like. This is you. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of like they'd have to film without him. Like they'd just have the back of yeah. somebody else's head and Ryan Reynolds would just. Yeah, talk yeah. to mate, probably the guy in the garbage t-shirt. Probably, yeah. Um, but yeah, so at one point Wesley Snipes tried to choke him out yes, yeah. on set. Uh, so Goya hired some lo- like a local biker gang yeah. to pretend to, I guess, to act as his bodyguard. So then Wesley Snipes stopped interacting with Goya altogether. Yeah. Except he would send him notes on post-it notes. Right. Like if he had script notes or whatever, he'd he'd or like acting notes or whatever or changing that he'd write whatever he wanted to communicate to David Goya and then he'd write front blade on them. <laughs> I know also there was there was a lot of like you can you can notice it in the film. Mm-hmm. Where Ryan Reynolds would just be quipping, and then it just cuts to Blade, and he's like, mm. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, oh yeah, yeah, mm. uh, what a film! And what, Patton Oswalt says like that film is like that film's a six, but if you knew what it took to make it even that good, right, it's a ten. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Which I love. Yeah, there's a very famous uh, George Takei William Shatner feud. Oh, that's been happening f- for years. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah. He's over the years. He's called Shatner a dickhead and a douche. And uh, Takai claims that his former co-star is self-involved. Uh, and he also, when he got married recently, he, he didn't inv- invited the entire cast. Oh, except, except for, for Shatner. For Shatner. Interesting. Yeah, but Shatner is a diva. That that is the oh sure that is yeah the rumor. And and the whole Galaxy Quest Tim Allen's character in that is based yes on, on Shatner. Shatner. Even though Shatner's like, no, nah, I don't see it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you right. Would you? But yeah, yeah. You, you're just looking in a mirror all the time. <laughs> That's why you didn't see it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that. But uh, I've seen Shatner in interviews. There's one where Tom Felton does one with him, uh, mm. you know, who played Draco Malfoy. Oh, yes. And it's very weird. Like, it's, well, first of all, those two together. Is well, because they, they, they do conventions. Oh, of course. And he goes sense. to interview him and it's just it's really bizarre. Like, yeah, it's yeah. It's just a really awkward exchange. Yeah. Oh. So, you anyway, know, I love that one. What else, Mason? Uh, have you seen the film Red Planet? I have. Did that come out at the same time as Mission to Mars? Around was the that, same it time. It was one yeah, of those yeah, things. It was one yeah. of those Armageddon, Deep Impact situations where clearly two studios were like, "No, the, the, it's Mars. It's, Mars, it's, Mars is, is the, it. the next. Trust me. Trust me. Whole genre of Mars movies. They can't both tank. Going to Mars, leaving Mars, living on Mars. Ghosts of Mars. Ghosts of Mars. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then they tried a couple and they didn't work. So anyway, Tom Sizemore and Val Kilmer were both on that. A film in Australia. Another I Val Kilmer one, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um. So apparently Kilmer, the beef started because Kilmer learned that uh, the production team shelled out money to ship Tom Sizemore's elliptical machine right, to yeah. the set, like from America to, to really? Australia. Um, Can he just go for a jog? Yeah, or or we'll get an ellipt. We have elliptical machines in no, Australia. No, not like that because oh, they, they work backwards here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they make you less fit here. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I've been using them every day. <laughs> um, so Kilmer found, finds this out and he apparently, I guess they're in the gym. Yeah. So Kilmer says- Last time bloody Kilmer's been in the gym. <laughs> Got him. No, I think he slimmed down actually. Yeah, I think no. he's looking a little anyway, better. Anyway, sorry, go on. Yeah. Yeah. So Kilmer says, 
I'm making $10 million on this. You're only making two. And so Sizemore responds by throwing a 50-pound weight at Val Kilmer. <laughs> well, Val Kilmer is notoriously difficult to work with. Uh, on yeah. uh, Island of Dr. Moreau. Moreau? Yes. Which was from like 95. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, well, that movie was a disaster for many reasons. I mean, yeah. bloody, what's his name was on it? Um, what's that guy? He was in Godfather. He's very famous. <laughs> Marlon Brando. Yeah. And, uh-huh. he, and he wore a bucket on his head for like the entire film because he thought it was funny. Yeah, uh, was, apparently, uh, yeah, uh, Kilmer bullied star Richard Stanley on set. Uh, it was 1994, sorry. And he was replaced by fellow director John uh, Frankenheimer. This could be a whole episode. Also, then the director goes to live in the woods. That's right. It's a yeah. whole thing. And he said of, uh, of Val Kilmer, I don't like Val Kilmer. I don't like his work ethic and I don't want to be associated with him ever again. Uh, also, apparently Val Kilmer apologized at the rap party and he was like, it's too late, Kilmer. You blew it. Right. Well, that's what apparently here, he, uh, him and Sizemore are cool now. Oh, they're cool now. But it, uh, one of the producers apparently said to Sizemore, because apparently he's more threatening, when you hit him, yeah. Because eventually you're going to snap and hit him. Kill him. <laughs> hit him. Don't hit him in the face. <laughs> Just And apparently you hit him in the chest. Okay, good. So apparently they fought it out. And my favorite part of this is the elliptical machine. Because <laughs> it's, have I said this, I must have mentioned this on the show. This somebody I met somebody who worked on Ghost Rider. Did I mention this? I don't think, maybe. Was it Rebel Wilson? No, 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 no. Uh, so it's somebody who worked in the production of Ghost Rider. And I learned from them that apparently when Nicholas, because that was filmed in Australia as well. Yeah. Nicholas Cage, um, this is alleged, by the way. Sure. And also, it's not incriminating or anything, because it doesn't matter. But uh, a, a, he, when he came to Australia, they gave him like a ni- like a super nice, like a luxury SUV. Right. So yeah. he could drive around and it had all, you know, the latest mod cons and all the luxury accoutrements and whatever. He could get all the local radio stations. Exactly. He could get a, FM, a Gold 104. A Gold 104. A Magic 693. A Triple M. Triple M. Yeah. Rocks football. Boy, does it. But anyway, he liked this so much mm. that um, at the end of the... So they, they got... Kiss a, 101. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently at the end of the, the, the production, he's like, all right, cool. Um, so... The SUV, ship it back to my house if you could. And they're like, ah, oh, probably pretty expensive to do that. And he's like, yeah, I know, but, you know. You, do it. You bought it for, <laughs> technically it's mine. Yeah. And I, and I liked it. So if you could send it back to America, to my house. And they're like, what we could do potentially is contact the company in America and they'll make you one that's exactly the same except – It'll have the steering wheel on the correct side of the road, so you can right. actually drive it in America. And he's like, "No, no, this one." <laughs> and so apparently they shipped it over, and now he, I assume, drives it around and has a lot of difficulty parking. <laughs> I bet. So, yeah, that guy is. I mean, apparently he's not bad to work with. He's just alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and broke. So, yeah, also that's that's why he's always shit working. like this. Yeah. yeah. And he had to give back his dinosaur skull recently. Yes, because it was stolen to, yeah. from Mongolia. Not by him. No. But from the dealer. Imagine if he yeah. national treasured and he I also stole heard, it. I also heard that... Um, that He's bald? He wears wigs? What? No. <laughs> that's, that one isn't true. No, what I heard was that... Apparent, I, I believe it was his birthday the, last, the day after the rap party. Right. So they were like, listen... We're all going to get together for the last day. For, for after after the rap party, we're all going to have to get together. All the cast and crew. We're going to have a birthday party for Nicolas Cage, and they're like, oh, "All right." And so everybody like has the rap party. Everybody gets loose. Everybody gets up, super hungover, mm. and then they all show up, and he doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> he's already left. He already went back to America. Well, he's a star. Yeah, he's a star. Exactly. Isn't he? Good yeah. on him. Yeah. Oh, just quickly on Batman Forever. Uh, Joel Schumacher said this about Val Kilmer. Val, short for Valerie, I assume, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, is the most psychologically troubled human being I've ever worked wow. with. Wow. <laughs> and you've worked with Joel Schumacher. Exactly, yeah. Oh, man. What else? Uh, I, got, I got one here. What do we got here? All right. um, apparently, Faye Dunaway and Roman Polanski hate each other while filming- um, <laughs> Chinatown? That's this right. is a Chinatown yeah, issue. The re- that's right. I was like, oh, this seems boring, but I'm glad I put it in. 
They had this legendary feud. Uh, while filming a scene for a movie, Dunaway had to use the restroom room and Polanski wouldn't let her. Faye Dunaway retaliated by pissing in a cup in one in a, that was in her <laughs> head and throwing it in the director's face. Wow. <laughs> Surely he saw that coming. No. What? You don't think she's pissing into a cup? You don't think you'd be like, hmm, something's up here. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, absolutely. <laughs> because she, she didn't leave. That's true. She was there. What an odd thing to do. (laughs) Not on her behalf. That makes sense. But to be like, hey, I think my, you know, I think. But you think that makes sense to throw a cup of piss into somebody's face? Yeah, but I mean, it makes it makes more sense than going. "Hmm, As a director, I liked. Look, I like. I I feel I get my best performances out of my actors when I encourage them and they get a good meal at the craft services and they get a lot of rest but I will not let them pee. <laughs> I much prefer they're always on edge because they need to pee. Very weird, yeah. Right? Having to pee is the worst thing in the world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when asked about the incident in 2008 by The Guardian, Dunaway bristled saying, the question doesn't even deserve the dignity of a response and abruptly ended the interview. So it definitely happened, but she's <laughs> upset about it. Um, also, apparently in that movie, uh, Roman Polanski, like one of her hairs on her head was catching the light. In a shot, so he just walked up and pulled it out of her head. <laughs> he didn't flatten it. No, he just he pulled just, it out. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. That's not cool, man. No. Yeah. I mean, it's probably of the uncool things he's done. <laughs> yeah, it's not the most uncool, uncool thing. Uncool thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He still hasn't come back, has he? Well, he will go to jail. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what a prick. Yeah. Fast 8, that was, this was the, probably the most recent one. Yes. Uh, the Rock made a post on uh, Twitter or Instagram or whatever. He was like, all the female co-stars are great. What a great movie. And then he said, my male co-stars, however, are a different story. Some conduct themselves as stand-up men and true professionals, while while others don't. The ones that, that don't are too chicken shit to do anything about it anyway. Candy asses. Ooh. When you watch the movie in April and you see I'm not acting some of those scenes, my blood is legit boiling. Ooh. Yeah. Now, he's only referring to one person, yeah. right? I thought it was a... Like a publicity stunt. Yeah, same. And I also thought it was Scott Eastwood because I don't know anything about Scott Eastwood. Right, yeah, sure. And also they... But it turned out to be Vin Diesel, right? Well, it's his franchise and The Rock's kind of... Well, The Rock Horny saved in, yeah. it. But he's, The Rock is probably a better character in those films and oh, as at least as beloved. Which yeah, is well, a, no, I would say like, so. In that series. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I think The Rock would kill Vin Diesel. Oh, yeah. They're... They're different sizes and shapes. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Vin Diesel probably has a lower center of gravity. Yeah, he probably does, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, apparently in watching that film, and I I don't remember, they don't share any screen time. Or if they do, it's like that's at a distance or they CGI yeah, them right, in right, and, right. and whatever. Like they mm-hmm. hate each other that that much. Mm. So, yeah. Maybe it's Tyrese Gibson's influence. Oh, could be. Because he's it? a bloody, this guy. You know what I'm talking about? He's ruined one film. He's shaking it up. Mm. Uh Nick Nolte was called by Julia Roberts. They filmed some shit together. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, he sa- she said, uh, he, while he can be charming and nice, he's also completely disgusting. Oh, it was I Love Trouble. Oh, was that was it? the one okay. where they were both, they were newspaper reporters. And they both loved trouble? They both loved trouble, but they were always getting into more trouble than the other one cared for. I bet. Mm. Yeah. yeah I one of, that one of them aged reasonably well and the other one turned into Nick Nolte, yeah? <laughs> it's true. Julia Roberts turned into Nick Nolte. <laughs> Nick Nolte remained largely the same. <laughs> now there's two Nick Nolte's out there. <laughs> That's too, too which is Which is bad for Gary Busey. Because <laughs> now, now he's getting, having even less chance of getting the Gary Busey Nick Nolte roles. <laughs> It's a nightmare <laughs> for him. Nolte acknowledged it and said, it's not nice to call someone disgusting, but she's not a nice person. Everyone knows that. Well. That's probably why her karma turned her into Nick Nolte. Yeah. What else, Mason? Tempers fled on the set so much, the two played more to stand-ins than each other. Yeah. That's not uncommon, though, just in general. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. big stars will be like, right, I'm out, and, you yeah. know, and someone else will come in. To- well, actually, I know a guy who also worked on Ghost Rider. What? And he was- Rebel Wilson. Yeah, he was Rebel Wilson. Yeah. And he was a stand-in for the for the villain. So all- Oh, it- Wes Bentley. Yeah, Wes Bentley. So Nicolas Cage would deliver Is Wes all his- Bentley also Australian? He's not. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he might be, but yeah. I-, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Is he Jake Gyllenhaal also? Do you reckon he could be? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah okay. He's aged poorly, though. Yeah. To a real Nick Nolte. He's got a real fancy beard in Hunger Games, isn't he? Yeah, it? that's right. It's one yeah. of my favourite beards. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> as a former fancy beard owner, I'm well That was well way aware. fancier than your beard as that's well. True, that was yeah. some next level beard. Yeah. I I ne- I ne- how do you get a 
a blade so thin that you can do the little curls. Like I don't. I think you have a guide. You got You must have a guide. Yeah. Mm. It's like, like when a someone, native guide. Yeah, right. It's like you know people have haircuts and they shave like elaborate patterns into your hair. Yeah, yeah. Seems you need a lot of follicles. I also think maybe they fill it in. They probably like, fill it like in. Like spray yeah. paint style. Yeah, yeah. I was speaking of Julia Roberts. She also. I think on Hook, yeah, she, she also went, had like a beef with Steven Spielberg, right? Because she dropped out. No, sorry. Her, she caught off her engagement to Kiefer Sutherland like four days before the wedding just prior. Wow. Yeah. So Extenuating yeah. circumstances. Uh, yeah, so. Tinker Hell was what they called her on set. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I, yeah, I think that was, it seems like, a, like she had a lot of personal problems at that around the time. And wasn't, wasn't she turning up late and all sorts of stuff was that the- like I said Tinker Hell Tinker Hell yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha and th- I think Spielberg's even said uh, he, is, he won't he won't work with her ever again oh wow yeah that was like 15 years ago yeah maybe 20, he- more than 20 91 also maybe he has <laughs> yeah he probably I don't, has I don't yeah I don't know yeah oh god uh, what do we got here Shelley Duvall this isn't so much a feud but on the set of The Shining Stanley Kubrick just tortured her the entire time. Yeah, that was back in the day when you could do that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. He isolated yeah. her from uh, cast and crew and told nobody to praise anything that she did. He changed the script and lines on her in the last minute so she never knew what she was doing till just before, so she stopped bothering to, to read him. Yeah. The baseball bat scene has a record for having the most takes. Uh, we know where she's fending, a, fending off Jack Nicholson yeah, with right. a baseball bat. Yeah, uh, right. 127 times they, wow. they shot that. And by the end, she was really crying and like yeah. emotional. Yeah. Uh, it shot over 500 days in order. So she kind of, you know, it had, so right. you see her kind of go. So her going insane was really more or less really happening. Yeah. That's interesting. 500 days is a long shoot as well. Yeah. Uh, also, he pr- she presented him with clumps of her own hair because she was, was falling so out. Right, yeah. Yeah. And she cried 12 hours a day. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, so that's, that's an additional half. acting time. Yeah. How does she? How does she have time to sleep? Yeah, Did she? Sl- she must have sleep cried. Lee, I was going to say after a while, I'm sure you'd get so used to crying, you'd just sack out and just fall asleep. Uh, yeah, I guess you would. Uh, see, for me, I'm like I'd quit, but you probably wouldn't because it's yeah. a Kubrick film. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what did she make after? Popeye. Yep. She hasn't actually. She's kind of. I think this damaged her long term. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good movie though. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also glad that they, you know what? I'm glad that nobody cares about movie making enough, like to this level anymore. Is like, that true? Do you reckon? Yeah. To, to the point where they'll psychologically torture somebody. Yes. Yeah. You're probably yeah. right. I think, if anything, this is, you know, the existence of Stanley Kubrick was good because it proved ultimately all the performances in those movies are fine. Aren't they you just? don't really need no, you to really go to that don't. extent yeah. ever. Yeah, I'm. Gl- I'm glad that movies are now are just all choppy editing and stand on your ex and say your lines and leave. Nah, I want someone to be tortured. Yeah, Makes all right. Me- yeah, you've twisted me arm. I guess it's like Leonardo DiCaprio does a bit of sleeping inside a bear. But that's not the same, is no, it? No. Yeah. Uh, what's this one? I got one here. Oh yeah, Kenny Baker and uh, Anthony Daniels hate each other. R two D two and C three PO. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, he said it. Baker said about him, he's been such an awkward person over the years. If you just calm down and socialize with everybody, we could make a fortune touring around making personal appearances. I'm asked him, asked him that four times now, but last time he looked down his nose at me like I was a little piece of shit. He said, <laughs> I don't do many of those conventions. Go away, little man. Wow. So, wow. Wait, who said that? Which one? Uh, Anthony Daniel said that to oh, Kenny that's Baker. Cruel. Uh, See, that would work better in reverse. Yes. If Kenny Baker was like, little man. Gotcha. You're the real little man You're the real here. little man, yeah. In 2011, Daniel opted uh, to downplay his co-star's contributions to the film, telling the mirror, I never saw him. I mean, R2-D2 doesn't even speak. He might as well have been a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. Yeah, so there's there's that. Can, does that seem real? Wait, so did they ever... Have they, have they bloody... Have they... He's dead. Yeah, no, but did they... Did they I don't um... know if they did, no. Come back together. Yes, that's no, the word I'm I, thinking. <laughs> What's the word for that? Rick, reconcile. reconcile. There yeah. we go. Yeah. No, I don't think they did. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. Wow. But uh, I think he put a nice post out about him when he died, maybe on Great. Twitter. Or maybe he did nothing. I might just mm. be imagining that. I've got one more. Maybe he was contractually obliged. He probably I think maybe was. there's some, like, I, th- I would imagine at this point they literally put a clause in your contract for a Star Wars movie that says if somebody on this movie dies, you have to... 
You have to have a story to, ready to go. You have to have a story ready to go and eulogise them. <laughs> and so, like, people are walking up to each other on set being like, Hey, Harrison, um, what, um, we had some good times, didn't we? What's a funny story you and I, what do you, what did we? Fuck off. <laughs> All right. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one more. Do you have any more? Um, look. The R two D two and C three PO of hip hop, Jamie sure. Foxx and LL Cool J. Oh, on uh, any, given any given Sunday, yeah, yeah, yeah. the great Pacino film. Whoa! Thank you. Football. Yeah, oh, all right. Uh, they scrum. There Sorry. we go. Very Sorry, good. Go on. Keep going. I was trying to think of a, literally another football term, American football term. I couldn't think of one. I don't know. No, exactly. Goalposts. <laughs> Kick off. Game day. Nice. Uh, they actually had a number of fist fights on set. Right, yeah. And um, the police were called. Really? Yeah, for reals. Had to who, break it who up. Got, yeah. no, anyone, no one got arrested? It was just a- uh, You know, just come on, guys. Just come on. We're all off. famous, rich Hollywood celebrities. <laughs> we're all slashies here. We're all actors slash rappers. If you could, just keep it calm, all yeah. right? A lot of them were actors slash yeah. rappers. Is that a yeah. good movie? Look, I enjoyed it at the time, but yeah. I would never, ever go back because it's a movie from, like, 99 or something 2000 like that, or something. Yeah. Guy gets um, his eye knocked out or something. The, f- the fight was immortalised in uh, Cool J's 2000 track, You Can't F With Me. Oh, That's right. Where yeah. he rapped, once and for all, what's my... P-? It's Okay, it's, it's very subtle, but you might pick it up. Okay, I'll say. Once and for all, what's my opinion on Jamie Foxx? He pussy. <laughs> pussy ain't funny as Chris Rock. Huh. He's not. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's true. He's probably yeah. not. Because Jamie Foxx is a rapper slash actor slash comedian. Comedian, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good in Baby Driver, though. He, isn't he just? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, I would say his career's obviously also gone better than uh, LL Cool J. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah my last- but LL Cool J, mm. hat like a shark fin. So who's the real winner? <laughs> Who is the real winner? Mm-hmm. On the set of Charlie's Angels, the, the reboot. Yes. Which McG or Brett Ratner made. Gee. <laughs> I think it was Big G. Bill Murray's Bosley. Oh, we forgot. That's the that's the origin of of me yelling at McG every time McG is mentioned. Terminator Salvation. Oh right, when, okay, when, yeah. When, yeah. When, when when Christian Bale is ranting at, at our, our friend, what's his name, Bus, Buttface or whatever, yeah. <laughs> at a number of times he yells at McG, the director yeah. McG, for help. He does. He goes McG. <laughs> Like he wants some backup. He's like, McG! Anyway. <laughs> McG doesn't say anything, though. No, that's true. He stayed well McG out of knows. Yeah. McG knows what side his bread and butters is buttered. Is buttered on. Buttered. Uh, Bill Murray, Bosley, yes. reportedly told Lucy Liu, Alexander Monday, you can't act. Oof. Then Liu allegedly started throwing punches at the actor and they had to be physically pulled apart. That's incredible. I didn't know about that. Me neither. That's yeah. that's all news to me. I think Lucy Liu could really fuck up Bill Murray as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was also replaced in the sequel. Yes, with um, the late Bernie Mac. The late Bernie Mac, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I never saw those movies. I always thought they looked shit. I have seen the first one. Right. And you didn't see Full Throttle? No. I've seen whichever one Crispin Glover is in, which I think is the first one. I think it's one. the first one, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Great. It's weird that he is not the... It's weird that Crispin Glover is not the source of tension. On any given set, I feel. Yeah, I know he's kind of he's weird and he keeps to himself. I think that's yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. I'm just going through my list to see if I've uh, missed any of them. Have you got any more, Mason? No, nah, I'm running out. Bloody move it a bloody along. Last few were off the top of my bloody head because I bloody don't don't uh, remember anything. <laughs> bloody didn't write anything down. If I'm honest with you. Uh, George DK and an and an apple analysis. No, but I told my Richard Gear chicken story. <laughs> yep. I reckon everybody should watch that Michael Babiglia stand up special where he's. He talks about he talks through his process of whether or not he's going to tell the um, David S. Gort, no, what's his name? David O. Russell story. Yeah, right. Like he goes, he realizes that at a point where if he does this, he's probably going to ruin his chances of, or well, he will ruin his chance of ever working with him because he's an actor. Also, yeah, he's sure, an actor. Right, uh-huh. And he went, you know what? I just, I have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. he had to, he had to go for the joke. All right, Mason, that'll do it then. Yeah. You know what it is time for? Oh, a famous segment. What we're reading. What we're going to read. Yeah. I'm doing a thing. What are we reading today? This is such a famous segment, isn't it's a it? Very famous segment. It's, very, it's well known in the I podcasting world. I would say world. at least fifty percent of our audience are aware of it. Yeah, they and the remaining fifty percent switch off as soon as the topic's done, <laughs> or midway through the topic. Yeah, who knows? Or during the theme song. Yeah, which I always forget we have. But yes. it's weird. We, we, there is a theme song. It's, I have to edit it in every week. It's real annoying. Yeah. 
What you a burden, Mason. Yeah, no, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, you mentioned this a few weeks ago, but I only just got and it And it's even more weeks ago because this is from the past. Oh, no. Uh, Love on Netflix. Oh, yeah, what you I only think? just got to. It's really good. Season one and two? One and two. Season two is what I watched, but I've seen season one before. Excellent. But it is a great show. It I is a great a show, yeah, yeah. It's real, man, and raw. It's real and raw. It's the realest thing you'll ever see. Mm. Do you like all the characters? Do you like some of the characters? Um... They're okay. They're pretty they? unpleasant. Yeah, a, lot of- <laughs> a lot of them are very... They're less unpleasant, I feel, in this season, though. Yeah, right. Because they've worked through some so, of their yeah. issues. My favourite thing about... Or one of my favourite things about this show is the fake kind of charmed, supernatural-esque show that they're oh, making. Oh, Wichita, the ba- yeah, about they're witches, making yeah. In the background. Uh-huh. I love that. I think it's... Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's, it, it's a show that could exist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's terrible, but it's no worse than any of the real no. ones of those. There was a feud on Charmed as well. Didn't Shannon Doherty leave or yeah, whatever Yeah, that's well? true. I think she's famous for feuds. Yeah, she loves a bloody feud. She probably feuded with Heather Lockley on Malware's Place or mm-hmm. 90210. Yeah, whichever one she whichever was on. Whichever one it was. Yeah, yeah. It was him. And then they had to get another Charmed sister. Yeah. But anyway, so it's it's Paul Rust yep. and Gillian Jacobs from Community. And they're an unlikely couple. Just getting just? through life, you know? What does it all mean, you know? What does it all mean? We'll never know mm-hmm. until we're dead. Oh, and then what? we might not even know then. He's all right. Depending on what happens after. Bloody hell. Yeah, I'm just saying, man. Oh, this got very existential. You know what else is existential? What's that? Blade Runner 2049 prequel short films that they're releasing. Are they? Uh, there's one out by the time this is. There'll probably be more later. Yep. Uh, it's called Nexus Dawn. And it's ne- it's got Neander Wallace, played by uh, the late, great Jared Leto. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming he's dead. I would say <laughs> I'm so, taking yeah. a stab in the dark. Yeah. This is going out three in the weeks future, after. We, don't know. we should have <laughs> yeah. made more predictions. We should have, yeah. Maybe we could do that at the end. Okay. Uh, who claimed? Uh, so basically, it's like f- f- five minutes. He claims to have designed a perfected uh, a model of replicant called the Nexus Nine. Um, and the events the first film take. Uh, so in tw- uh, 2013, yes. replicants are outlawed. Are they already outlawed? Maybe they're not. 2030 Maybe- or 2013. 20. 20- 2020, 20, 2023, they're outlawed. So okay, like four right. years after the first one or whatever it is. Uh-huh. And he's trying to have this and Neander Wallace guy is trying to have this repealed because he's like, well, check out this real good one that I'm yeah, right. So that kind of sets up for, and it's set like, I think it's like, yeah, I think it's set in 2033. So it's a prequel. Oh, okay. It's quite, it's a wow. decade or so before yeah, the right. new one. So interesting. Yeah, I think it's worth checking out. It's uh, also interesting that the they've only gone through three Nexus models. Is that how many there are? There were the the, the last ones were Nexus Six. Oh, so okay. they've only gone through three Nexus models in like twenty five years. Yeah, hmm. got to get them right, man. That's true. It's like Nintendo device. But they should but what you know what they should have taken Apple's procedure and there should have been a Nexus 6S. Yep. And then a Nexus slightly se- slimmer. Yep, then a Nexus 7, then a Nexus 7C, which is just the same Nexus but they've been stripped down. They have less emotional capacity, but they're in weird colors. It's like a bright yellow one and a bright green one. <laughs> no headphone jack. No headphone jack exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, other things that other Apple things. do. Yeah. And there there's also they they're linked to Prometheus and that they're all linked, aren't they? Like the same universe. I'm Are fairly they? certain. Yeah. Like there's co- the corporations crossover. Oh, I see. Right, right, right. I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait for Soldier 2049. Oh, it's going to be so good. Mm-hmm. We got we to do a Blade Runner episode, actually. Okay. We might get a very special guest. Harrison Ford. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you imagine just harassing Harrison Ford for an hour about Blade Runner? Can you imagine ha- harassing Harrison Ford to be on a podcast? <laughs> imagine. He wouldn't understand it, would he? No, that's yeah. true. Oh, I love it. All right, next segment? Uh, no, because I'm not ready. Oh, well, Mason, I don't James know. James, any- Phil, quickly. Uh, um, listen, uh, comics, Just re- I read some comics. I don't know what I've read in three weeks. Uh-huh. Probably uh, some, some the last Marvel Secret Wars or whatever. Oh, yeah, is that nearly mind. done? Yeah, I think there's one left. Okay. It might be out by now, yeah. I saw a panel and it's regular Steve Rogers punching Hydra Steve Rogers, so I don't know. <sighs> What that is? They might have a fight in the mind. Might be a might be a dream sequence. Might be real. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just speculating, so it's not a spoiler. <laughs> letters is our next segment. The classic one was the letters. Oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. I know they're here right now. We're gonna do letters. What do you reckon about that? I don't know. I have no thoughts. Okay, good. <laughs> I do have some letters, though. Okay, I'm ready. If you ready. want to reach the show, you can hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. You can also shoot an email over to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Uh, you want to go first or want me to go first? You go first. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, I, who's this from? 
I think it's from, I don't have the name here. Oh, no, it's from Dane. The Cheesy Horse. Oh, yes. <laughs> on Twitter. What kind of end credits scene would you like for Avengers 3? How would they set up Phase 4? Oh, I would like a series of very small origins of new characters. Okay, yeah. Like maybe like... A Captain Marvel. Maybe a Captain Marvel. Yeah, not even that. Maybe like... Oh, because it has to be stuff that's... We know we are, it, the the phase four slate is already done, is it? Or, like they've figured out finalized what it, is. it. Yeah, possibly. Okay, or maybe not. Well, I, I reckon I would like maybe maybe a, a whole bunch of small origins of like maybe s- second string heroes or minor villains or something. Right. Like okay. That. Yeah. Yeah. Like just some sort of illustration that the world is getting weirder. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe like a half a dozen in a row. And then you're like, oh, it's going to be that guy. It's going to be that guy. It's going to be that guy. All right. Excellent. The rhino. So you want like, yeah. So you want like a Amazing Spider-Man 2 Origins Basement. Yes. Where they just Origins Basement. Them. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess for me, it depends on what they do in the movie. Because I think yeah. there's a good chance a lot of people are going to be killed. And then uh-huh. maybe someone will step through a time portal and be like, come with me if you want to time travel. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I think if anyone's going to be killed, it, it won't be Tony Stark. He'll be the one who do the time travel. I'd imagine to yeah. fix the whatever because oh, I think I think this movie is going to be Thanos just obliterating everything, yeah, and right. then the next movie will be fixing it with Captain Marvel. Oh, I yeah. see. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So you think the world's going to be left in ruins? Something like that, or something really terrible will happen to the Avengers or whatever. Do you think yeah. Avengers Four might be they have to go through time and dimensions and fix everything? Yes. Wow, interesting. Yeah. I never, I'd not, I'd not even considered. that. I think there will be a bit of that in. Infinity War, but then it's going to really kick in a gear, and also because Captain Marvel's coming after, yeah. so it's going to le- there's going to be some there are some movies that come out in between, yeah. but there's no Captain America film, there's no Iron Man film, That's so true. it's just going to leave people kind of in suspense. Yes. It'll be like Back to the Future Two, yeah, mm-hmm. a movie. Correct. It'll be like a movie, is what I'm saying. Oh, got a letter, Mason. Uh, Why don't let's you see. shut up about it? Daniel Madden wants to know, uh, because Marvel made a smaller scale Civil War for the MCU. Yes. So it was, it, it was Civil War in name, like the comic book. Civil War. To Civil War, but it was sort of- In name. In name. Yeah. Less detail in sure. the movie. Do you think DC could make a smaller scale Injustice story after a few more movies and make it work? I think no. Why do you say no? Because first of all, you have to have a regular universe that is consistent and makes sense before you build Injustice, which right, is set yeah. in a parallel universe where everything's darker and meaner, but that's this universe. Yes. Unless you say this is the Injustice universe. Well, that, that's that, that's a theory also. I don't think they'd turn around and be like, this is, no, nah, this is Injustice. It looks like it could be. See, that's what I'm but, talking yeah. about. What if they went, okay, this, what if they went, this is the bad universe mm. and they discarded it? Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, cool. I think people would be confused. Though. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it'd be a real sort of hail mary play if mm. they went. All right, we're going to say that this is the universe that is bad. Yeah, and I, they won't say bad. They'll be like alt fractured timeline. Yeah, or they'll something. say fractured. Yeah. What if they were like, no, this is the bad. We one. don't like it. This it's is bad. a rotten universe. <laughs> and then what? If, what if in the next? What if at the this Injustice League two or whatever, mm. a portal opens up and it's like a more Technicolor Superman and a more like. Batman with a smile on Batman his dial. Batman with a smile on his dial or whatever. And it's like fresh clean cut. But it's the same actors, but like fresh clean cut versions. And they're like, what is going on here? Yeah, yeah. And then it turns out they're an injustice. And then that universe is destroyed. And then we go to a new, better universe. I guess the problem with that is Wonder Woman was really well received. That's true, yeah. So I think if, if anything was going to stop it, it would be that. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's nice. <laughs> I guess that's true, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you're right. Mm. I guess they could that's, go- You could still do it. Yeah, it's, I guess they yeah. could- Yeah, that's true. I guess they could be like- We'll take your Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. They could, well, they could do like- They could go, okay, well, Wonder Woman's kind of the same in both realities. Yeah, yes. That could work. Or they could do it like in that episode of Rick and Morty where- <laughs> Everybody in the Injustice universe is killed except for Wonder Woman, but the regular universe is Wonder Woman is killed, so they just switch her yes. over and nobody notices. Nobody notices, yeah. Mm. That's yeah. They We're- could even go like, because of Amazonian magic, it's fine now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Click. Click, we did it. We did it, yeah. Mm. Uh this is from Drew, hashtag weekly planet pod. Do you boys stand uh where do you boys stand on superhero training monster montages? I like BVS Incredibles. I feel uh, we need more of the pushing stuff around. 
What do you? What, I like them. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah, what do you hate them? Kick ass uh, probably's done one. Probably. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I like. I, I think because I just like a training montage. Okay, right. The Batman Superman one is funny because he's all throwing tires <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah, it's real funny. Like what different? Like you can lift all the tires you want. Yeah, you're still not going to be as strong as Superman. I don't no. know if you know that, Bruce. No. Well, also he's because he's also got the mechanized suit, so he doesn't doesn't really need, need it. it. Yeah. I mean, maybe may, may, he just he would just work out. I think that's just a regular workout true. for him. I don't think it was anything. Different. What I like about that is that it's this super high tech bat cave yeah. where everything's clearly been, you know, custom made to the nth degree, like to his precise specifications. But his his weightlifting implement is just an old tire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where did it come from? And he's hitting the one with a hammer or Did whatever. he just grab it off the side of the road? I guess he did. Or it's not a Batmobile. Batmobile. I don't think no, it's a Batmobile. You're probably tire. right. It's not, yeah. Mm. Yeah, all these because I guess the idea is that like, look, he's tough and he's real, because like his bench press has got like chains on it and it's, yeah, right, it's uh-huh. grim and dark and uh-huh. whatever. Like he, they don't give him like a super clean gym. Do you think they should give him a super clean gym? Yeah, super clean gym. Okay, but it's good. got bat logos on it's everything. It's got bat logos and everything. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, this is from Sean. Uh, will you guys do an episode on the new Spider-Man PS4 game? Yeah, maybe. Sure, maybe. Yeah. yeah. We did one on Arkham once. On did we? Arkham games, yeah. Did we? Yeah, on uh, that spin-off one they did that Rocksteady didn't make. Oh, Origins. Yeah. Huh. But you don't have a PS4, do you, Mason? No, I don't. We're going to have to play it together then, maybe. Yeah, as a team. Yeah. I'll take the directional ca- uh, arrows you take. <laughs> the, the webs. Buttons. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. What else? Uh, let's see. Shout out to Abu Zahir, who's on a day four of a 4,000 kilometer one man drive across Canada. Uh, he's been only listening to us. Woof. Yeah, right? <laughs> do you think maybe it isn't a 4,000 kilometer drive? It just feels like a 4,000 kilometer drive. It could very well be. Yeah. Do you think he's still driving? Or By the time this goes out, oh mate, in the uh, future after Jared Leto's funeral, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, you're right. Uh, no, I reckon he's made it by now. He's made it good. Or he's driven off the side of the road. And he'll, he'll probably don't hear this because he's, he's sick of us. <laughs> he's, yeah, right. That's true. About enough. He's one of the yeah. He's one of the guys that turns off after the topic. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is from a movie called Ben. Ooh. Who would win in a fight? You and Mason's previous selves from episode one, or the Weekly Planet us. Now, oh, good question. I was, I'm more tired now, but uh, I, can, I guess I've got more to lose. <laughs> so, yeah, because um, I wasn't married, I didn't have a kid. Yeah, um, yeah, you're the same, you haven't changed at all. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> that's right. No, that's true. No, you're, <laughs> no, no. you're not wrong. What do you uh, think, though? Uh, you were doing, uh, you were doing a martial arts then. Remember, that's true, but I was terrible at it. Oh, yeah, okay. I think I'm more comfortable with the fact that I'm no good at that sort of thing. So, <laughs> Uh, I th- no, I think previous version would win because he was probably slightly angrier I and think. younger. Yeah, that's true. I think I could beat up previous me, but I also think I'm probably in better shape now. I cut out yeah. sugar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, I I'd agree. But I'm also you cut out all but sugar. I'm also tired now because I cut out sugar. <laughs> so you could do a sugar hit before you take on yourself. That's true, and I have a good 15 minutes into me in me before I was like, Ugh, <sighs> fine. Yeah. Mm. Inconclusive. Inconclusive. It is. We'd never know, will we? That's true. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think. I think modern. I think current me would probably win because I would just rub my incredible podcast success in his face. Ah, uh, yeah. That's right. Or you'd yes. be like, it never went anywhere. Oh, I could trick time. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could trick him. That's true. You wasted your time. Yeah. Yeah. You could use knowledge of future events to throw him off. You could tell him about Jared Leto's death. That's right. He'd be real upset, wouldn't he? Because I haven't seen Batman v Superman <laughs> or Suicide Squad yet. And I'd be like, oh, no. How, how is he going to put on an incredible Joker performance? <laughs> Man. That's the show. Yep. Uh, what else? Future show. Yeah, future show. Do a thing, Mason. Do the end. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. You can find us on Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and the Gmail and Bandcamp. And Twitter. And Twitter. Yes. And I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies. Uh, let's see if you want to support the show. You can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck, if you will. Chuck in a buck. Chuck in a buck if you, if you wouldn't miss it if you dropped it. Yeah. Come give on. it. Give us it. Give it. Give it to us. We demand it. <laughs> <laughs> We should, that's, that's as, a, as, a, as a criminal, that's my mugging career. Right. I walk up to people and I'm like, hey, what amount of money would you not miss? <laughs> If you dropped it and they're like, oh, two bucks. And I'm like, give me two bucks. <laughs> it's not the same in real life as opposed to the internet, is it? No, it's really not. We've yeah. also got an Amazon affiliate link in the episode description. You click on that. 
If you want to buy any of the movies, if you want to buy Blade Trinity on DVD oh, and man. watch that and watch that six watch of the, a film, watch the commentary and see if it some seems better. Yeah, yeah. With, with the knowledge of a feud behind it, you can just click on that link. You pay the same price. We get a buck for some reason. Not we love price. it. We love it every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, what else do we do? Thank you, the Brute and the Basilisk. I should know these by now. Thank you, the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our no. themes. And we've got T-shirts on Public, Got all kinds of cool designs. Yep, yep. Um, let's see. If you want to go to planetbroadcasting.com, that's all the Planet... Bro- Wait, it's Planet Beacasting, isn't it? I don't know what it is in three weeks. But it, it's one at of those. some point, it'll be Planet Broadcasting. Yeah. But currently, it's planetbcasting.com. Click on there. We've got all sorts of other great shows on there. You can sign up to the newsletter. You learn all the bloody about them. Everything you'd ever need to know. And more. And less. Too much information. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Next week, who knows? It's the future or the past. Yeah, what is next? What would next week be? Maybe Star Trek. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Star Trek. I have no idea. I can't think three weeks ahead. That's okay. I can only think three beaks ahead. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Mm. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Or last week, because it's the future now. Oh, quickly. Who de- who's dead? Oh, um, boy. I don't, I don't want to curse anyone. I do. Who were you going to say? <laughs> I'd say Jared Leto. <laughs> oh, you did say Jared Leto. That's true, yeah. Gerard Butler? Uh, I, my first thought was Stan Lee. Which is I, a bad that thing. also crossed my yeah, mind. Right? Yeah, right. Exactly. No, it's too I, real, though. It's too real. Yeah. Uh, did you say Gerard Butler? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, then Catherine Heigl. Done. Gerard Butler and Catherine Heigl are going to go out in a murder-suicide pact. <laughs> anyway, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. What if I'm dead? <laughs> what will be fine. No, but what if this goes out and I'm dead? How this will is... you die, though? I've, I've gone overseas. Who knows? Oh, plane crash. Yeah, plane crash. Um, mugging gone wrong. Uh, you could be crushed to death under, like, a Las Vegas monument of some sort. It's very possible, yeah. You might fall into that... that, that Water fountain at the end of Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> yes, I could. You might be crushed in the Bellagio's coin vault or whatever. <laughs> you might try to do a like a weird Chinese acrobat thing and get twisted up like a pretzel in an air vent. <laughs> so I climb into a box and then yeah, just exactly. die there. Yeah, you might be killed by Andy Garcia yeah, just on the street. Yeah, that's possible. Mm-hmm. But if I kill him first. That's very true. Yeah. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.